together for the mighty King of glory. Put your hands together for kings of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Greet your neighbor, say good morning. Greet your neighbor, say good morning. Yes, viewers all over the world, good morning to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Come and wave your hands and say thank you, Jesus. Come and wave your hands and thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his favor. Thank him for his compassion. Thank him for his unlimited grace in your life. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. They are new every morning. In Jesus' name. You may be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Let someone say, I am in the presence of God. To receive from him. I am at the feet of Jesus Christ. To learn from him. I am at the feet of Jesus Christ. To learn from him. Are you sure? Then get ready to make his word the standard for your life. Hallelujah. Is your soul weary? Do you feel like your faith is fainting? Brethren, I want to assure you that your life will run smoothly if you go by the way of the cross. The Bible says the word of God is the chronicle of God's love for his people. From darkness before Eden to eternity, you are in it. I am in it. But most importantly, God is in it. This is the plan of God for you and me, the world and eternity. Can I have a witness? Can you raise your Bible up? Raise your Bible. Say, this is the plan of God for me. I can hear you. Say, this is the plan of God for me. The world and eternity. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12, Verse 1, the Bible advises us to strip off all weight that may slow us down from running the straight race with God. Those worries, anxiety, cares, and burden. Today, many invest heavily on activities meant to prolong life and improve physical condition, but I spend little or no time on enhancing their spiritual life. Many today invest heavily on activities meant to prolong life and improve physical condition, but I spend little or no time on enhancing their spiritual life. Brethren, how short-sighted it is to work so hard to improve this life and take no time to prepare for eternity. Think about this. How short-sighted it is to work so hard to extend this life and not take time to prepare for eternity. In the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 22, when Jesus advised the young rich man to sell all his possessions and give the money to the poor so he could have treasure in heaven. Jesus was simply telling him to get rid of 
anything that has become more important to his life than God. The same message Jesus has for all of us. The same message Jesus has for you and I today, brethren, viewers all over the world. That we must get rid of anything that had become more significant to our life than our spiritual essence. God. In the usual worry about what tomorrow might bring, many have become useful instruments in the hand of Satan without even being aware of it. You know, we are getting to the end of the year, the most sensitive and delicate time. Brethren, let us learn of Christ Jesus here to always be at God's finding rather than our own. And not to take any irregular course, irregular path, irregular way for our supply when our wants is ever pressing. Not to take any irregular course. I don't know the situation you are facing. We must be careful not to take any irregular course for our supply when our wants is ever pressing. Note, God knows all you need. Although he may not necessarily give us all we want, but the Bible says he will give us all we need because human's wants are unlimited. And this brings me to the title of this message for you this morning. Slow down and care for your spiritual life. Tell your neighbor, say slow down. Slow down, slow down. Slow down. and care for your spiritual life. You know, our spiritual life is the engine that carries all our possessions and flourishes them. Our spiritual life is the very engine that carries all our possessions and flourish them. No matter how we live, brethren, life is too short to waste on things that have no lasting value, lasting significance. It is important for us to deal with undisciplined areas in our life. You know the areas of your life that are undisciplined. Look to your neighbor and say neighbor. Say neighbor. There is something far more important than your present situation. There is something far more important than your present situation. Now, let's open our Bible quickly to the book of Matthew. And let's take the reading by the special grace of God from Matthew chapter 6. Let's all want to slow down and care for your spiritual life. Say slow down and care for your spiritual life. Now, let's take it from verse 19. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, we take it from verse 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth, nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now let's go straight to verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things 
shall be added unto you. Brethren, it is important for us to know when you read that Bible from that Matthew chapter 6, from verse 9 to the end, I personally have come to realize that what we treasure the most controls our life, whether we like it or not. What we treasure the most controls us, whether we like it or not. It is important to know that fleshly desires and spiritual desires are parallel lines. They are diametric opposites. No one can serve two masters with equal concentration, equal loyalty, equal attention. Remember, both master wants us to run the straight race with them. Both masters want us to run a straight race with them. You know, fleshly desires is our needs. While spiritual desires represent eternity. But Jesus knows that we need those fleshly comforts to live for him. But he would rather ask us to sort the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and every other thing will follow. He would rather ask us to first sort the kingdom of God, brethren, and all his righteousness. Every other thing will follow. Today, many choose to live in a descending order rather than an ascending order. Instead of starting from one to two and to three, many choose to begin with three before regressing to two and to one. Brethren, the Bible says he won't neglect the present for the future. He's acting opposite to the order of God and sound wisdom. Many today choose to focus so much on their situation, neglecting the importance of living each day as if it were our last. How do I mean? By living your tomorrow's trouble to the one who bores our trouble on the cross. Ask yourself, how much loyalty do you give to the one who gives value to your life? How much concentration do you give to the one who gives value to your life? Ask yourself, how much attention do you give to the one who gives value to your life? Remember, God knows our challenges, brethren. And he gives us enough grace to face each trial. He gives us enough grace, brethren, to face each trial. Let someone say, slow down and care for your spiritual life. Many today confound within a tiny slice of life. Remember, when your focus is only on making money, acquiring wealth, gaining popularity, a large slice of life will pass you by. It is very tempting, brethren, to use good health, wealth, position, power, and prestige to measure your life. However, on God's scales, they are lighter than puff of air, a breath of air. But don't forget that the glory of the world, brethren, is the most charming temptation 
to the carnally minded. I know we, many people are seeking for breakthrough. New relationship, new dream, new goal. But I want you to know this morning that the glory of the world is the most charming temptation to the carnally minded. I say carnally minded. And so also the life that carries it. Brethren, whenever you are experiencing a downtime in life, perhaps in your health, your relationship, your finances, your career, it is an opportunity to slow down and care for your spiritual life. You must understand that there is something wrong somewhere. Whenever you are experiencing a downtime in life, perhaps your dream, your vision, your marriage, your career, your destiny, even your health, slow down. It is important for you to slow down and care for your spiritual life. Are you young or old? Are you rich or poor? Are you sick or healthy? It is never too late for you to slow down and care for your spiritual life. If you are waiting for a more convenient time to do this, brethren, viewers all over the world, that time may never come. Let someone say slow down and care for your spiritual life. Slow down and care for your spiritual life. Are you frightened by what your situation has to say? Are you discouraged because of what life brings? Remember, the cure for discouragement is to learn to resolve to leave all trouble for the one who bears our trouble on the cross. Many would ask, why do these people keep talking about situation as if they are easy to face. You know, they keep talking about situation, situation, as if situations are easy to face. Brethren, we know how hard it can get. Many people asking themselves, but why do these people keep talking about situation? As if they are an easy thing to face. Of course, we know how hard it can get. But one thing Prophet T.B. Joshua made us to understand, brethren, is that unpleasant situations are not meant to stay. They will surely go if you take the right course. Tell your neighbor, unpleasant situations are not there to stay. They will surely go if you take the right course. Brethren, where there is a will, there is a way out. Where there is a will, a determination, there is a way out. Today, the way out for you has come in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't care what the statistic says about you, but if you can follow this instruction, brethren, in righteousness, I tell you, the way out for you has come in the name of Jesus Christ. The way out for you has come in the name of Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor where there is a will, a determination, there is always a way out. Are you frightening by what your situation has to say? Remember when you are anxious about your situation, you will not be able to differentiate between God's supply and Satan bait in the face of certain trying situation. That is why when Satan gives something with the right hand, something that apparently looks like peace, with his right hand, he takes from you what your lives depend on with the left hand.
when Satan gives something that apparently looks like peace, it takes from your life what your life depends on with his left hand. We have listened to so much testimonies of those whom Satan gives peace, things that apparently looks like peace. But at the end of the day, it takes from them what their lives depend on with the left hand. And that is why Jesus says in John 14, verse 27, that I do not give peace as the word gives. The peace of Christ is infinitely and more valuable than that of the world. The peace of the world are time bound. Why peace of Christ is for eternity. The joy, the peace, the comfort that you enjoy depends on where your breakthrough comes from. Let us learn from Zacchaeus. In the book of Luke chapter 19 verse 9, a man who spent his entire life pursuing things that have no lasting value. Until he understands the meaning of life and he reached out to Jesus and salvation came to his house. Brethren, you just have to experience God. Until we experience God, there will be a dissatisfaction in our lives. I mean, a sense of hunger to know what life is all about. A desire to know what happened after life is over. You just have to experience God. This is what I have learned from my father in the Lord, my mentor, Senior prophet T.B. Joshua. To desire God first. And every other thing will follow. Let someone say slow down. Slow down. And care for your spiritual life. Finally, brethren, let's turn our Bible to the book of Romans chapter 8. The book of Romans chapter 8. And let us take this home. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Let's take verse 5 and 6 together. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Can I hear you? Is life and peace. Ask your neighbor, how foolish it is to care for our needs. Face your neighbor and say, how foolish it is to care for our needs and not to have a rich relationship with God. How foolish it is for me to care for my need and not to have a rich relationship with God. How does this mean to you? You know, we care so much about our needs, but how much do we care about our spiritual life, our relationship with God? Remember the blessings of the world enriches the body temporarily, while the blessings of Christ enriches the soul, enrich the soul for eternity. In other words, when you care for your spiritual life, you will see yourself the way God sees you. Only then you will be dead to what your situation has to say and be alive 
in Christ Jesus. Brethren, as we are approaching a new year, make a decision today. Whom to run your race for? Are you going to keep running for fleshly desires or spiritual desires? Remember those who put their trust in Christ Jesus shall find him to be all sufficient and their happiness shall remain permanent. Brethren, let us live for eternity and we shall secure all. Let someone say all. All that is available in it. Salvation is available. Prosperity is available. Good health is available. Direction, freedom is available. If you can begin today to care for your spiritual life, this is the message for you today. May the Lord bless his word in the midst of your heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Let someone say there is something far more important. There is something far more important than my present situation, my spiritual life. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Take more of me, give me more of you, take more of me, give me more of Oh, oh, oh. Jesus' name. You may be seated. 